Hey guys, uh, just before we get started today's video, I just wanted to apologise. Uh, sorry if the content's been dry this week. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice right now, you probably might not be able to, which is a bit awkward. Uh, I'm, I feel really ill at the moment. I've uh, missed a couple of days of college. I do feel really, really sick at the moment. So I thought maybe not to record any videos. I thought I'd get over it, but I actually haven't got over the illness, so I thought I'm not just going to leave the content dry. But anyway, if you haven't read the title of the video, which would be odd, uh, it's how DLC is going to look, or how I think it's going to look, in Destiny 2. Now, just before I make my first few points, it'd mean a lot if you could drop a like uh, on this video. Uh, I've been getting really good support on my videos recently. Uh, my, my channel's growing at, at, at a slow, uh, a generally slow rate uh, in the grand scheme of things, but for me, I'm really happy with where I am at the moment. I'm really proud of the content I'm making. I hope you're enjoying it as well. So like it like if you enjoy the video, dislike it if you didn't, but please tell me why if you don't like the video and subscribe for more. But anyway, this intro is getting far too long. So if we look at the original Destiny DLC content plan screenshot that got leaked ages ago, we can see that there are two smaller DLCs at the beginning after the original launch of Destiny. We had the Dark Below and House of Wolves, which went according to plan which uh, were, were received in a mixed way, you know, the vanilla game of Destiny was rather disappointing for a lot of people and then the first DLCs really didn't deliver either, you know, they're very scarce on content, they released a, a you know, a, a sort of mixed again feeling about the raid, Crota Zen, that was released, that wasn't received too well and then with the, with the second DLC there was no raid. Then we can see there was this Comet, as they call it, which seems to be ignored by a lot of people. This actually did happen. This, in my opinion, is what the Taken King was. You know, a big expansion. Obviously, at the screenshot, you can see all the details about what, what was going to be included in the expansions, and it is very similar. So the Comet was the Taken King. And then we were meant to have two smaller DLCs afterwards. And now, obviously, they didn't happen. And from the things we know about Destiny 2, we know that it was delayed from 2016, and in my opinion I never thought it was going to come out in 2016. To be honest, what I think Bungie realised is with the first DLCs doing so bad, but the success of the Taken King, they realised they couldn't make smaller DLCs like the Dark Blow and House of Wolves, so what they decided to do is make, a, is make one DLC sort of halfway between a House of Wolves size and a Taken King size, which is Rise of Iron. And now how I feel it's going to go in Destiny 2 is a very similar route to how it's gone in the original year of Destiny 1, but I feel with the addition of the new developers, I've actually made a video on that, I'll link that in the description, I feel that they'll be going down a more... with more content route. So they'll be doing the same plan, I feel, as... I think they'll be taking this leaked content plan that kind of happened in year 1, and I think they'll actually be implementing that into Destiny 2, and I think they'll be following that plan. So launch of the game, two DLCs, big DLC and then two two more DLCs and then Destiny 3 if there is a Destiny 3 which there probably will be, it's a pretty big franchise so Destiny 2 will launch in my opinion uh, we don't know what the story of that's going to be it, I really do hope it's going to expand on the, the storyline of Destiny 1 I hope they don't take it in a in a different route, I hope it is literally just all the answers of Destiny 1 explained but I think Two DLCs will be released uh, in the first 365 days of Destiny. I think they'll be probably just a bit smaller than Rise of Iron, if not Rise of Iron sized. And I think they will they'll be spread. They'll, they'll be spread in similar time frames. I think one will. I don't think we'll be seeing events at the launch of Destiny 2. I don't think there'll be a Festival Lost or a Dawning. I think there'll just be a DLC in December. And then I think maybe March time they'll release the second DLC. Now at the end of that year, I feel there may be a Comet as in another Taken King size expansion, so basically in a, you know, a whole another game worth of content mixed in with live events in between and then I think the March of, uh, of 2019 will that be? 2019, yeah god, that's ages away uh, I think it will be a, another smaller DLC and then hopefully at the end of the year you know, another small, well not the end of the year but another smaller DLC and then possibly Destiny 3 after that. Now obviously that's if things go to plan, that's if they, they have enough money, have enough budget. You know at the end of the day Destiny is alongside GTA 5 one of the highest budgeted games of all time. I wonder where that budget's gone now. <laughs> obviously on things like having Peter Dinklage as the ghost is probably a necessary amount of money but I think it's going into this DLC plan. 
Now, I personally don't think this will be stuck to. I think this is the plan they have for Destiny 2. I think this is their way of having, quote-unquote, in the Activision conference call, consistent content. Now, whether or not they'll stick to this is a different question, but this, this would be a consistent content plan with live events in between. And as we saw with them adding a live narrative director and things like that, we're going to have story-driven live events, hopefully, that would the time of the rest of the game along with all the other narration related jobs to me it just feels like uh, Destiny 2 is going to be very much centralised around one story rather than in Destiny 1 we had our main storyline and then every other DLC that followed kind of had nothing to do with the main one obviously Crota was just elaborated on in, in the dark below but 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 really like any questions we had in the main story weren't really answered you know you know what didn't the stranger have time to explain things like that, you know, what even is the Traveller? I think I'm going to revert back to the, the leaked story we had of Destiny 1 and, and the jumble up, there was a jumble up in development, if you don't already know, with Destiny 1, and that's why the story was a bit flimsy and the game didn't launch as grand as it was made out to be. And that's because of a change in development close to the launch, within the year actually, which does frighten me, seeing as how that is happening right now, as we speak with Destiny 2, they are hiring new developers, hiring new developers in key positions actually not just smaller positions you know senior senior staff members which to me could could suggest there could be a jumble up but the reason that main story wasn't used in my opinion is I feel it was felt that things like the traveler being evil and things if you don't really know that was the leaked storyline wouldn't have had as much of an impact now I know when we heard about that storyline you know everyone in the Destiny community was like well that was badass you would have loved that but what people weren't realising is we'd been playing Destiny for like a year. We got attached to the Traveller, we understood the Traveller. But imagine if at launch, you just learn what the Traveller is, and then you're immediately told it's bad, like it wouldn't have an impact. But now, now we've grown, we've basically worked for the Traveller. We've worked enough hours into the game that we're basically like an employee of the Traveller almost. People play this like a job. I know I do sometimes. So... Imagine being told now that everything you did was villainous and the stranger told us all, all the truth and things. That's what I think. I think the story of Destiny 2 will follow that sort of route. You know, I, I feel the stranger will be part of a, a smaller team of rogue guardians who are trying to, you know, pull up the truth about the traveller. I think the speaker might be more sinister. And I think this, this, this group you meet, you, you'll become part of. Kind of, I don't, I, I'd never really played Halo Reach too much, but... You know, I played a, a, a fair a fair amount of it to, to know that you're part of kind of this... And, and, in, and in the newest Halo, actually, with Nathan Fillion and, and things, you had a charismatic group that you were part of, and I think that might be the route Destiny 2 will be going down, that you'll be part of the of this sort of charismatic group of Guardians, uh, the Stranger being one of them, hopefully, so maybe she does have time to explain, given a whole sequel. So back onto the topic of, of DLC now, I've, I've rambled on a little bit. I feel DLC and Destiny will be a, a lot more consistent, but I feel with more consistent paid DLC will come more consistent live events, you know, with more funding. I think with with the microtransactions as well, I don't feel Bungie has been putting all the money they've made from microtransactions into the live events, which you might say, you know, that that's disgusting, seeing as how we were told that whatever money we made of microtransactions goes into live events, but I think the reason that is, I think... I think the introduction of microtransactions, Bungie realised the scope they wanted their game and the amount of time it would take and the money it would take, they didn't really have, despite it being a hugely budgeted game and things, they didn't really have the, the funding or, or, or the, the, the development size to do that. So I think introducing microtransactions, as negative as it is in the, the gameplay experience, it probably has put a lot of money into Destiny 2. You know, I don't think a lot of that money went to to, des to Destiny 1 and the live events, because if you, if you look on Rise of Iron, I think they made 7 million or something ridiculous, just from, ju just from like a f the first few weeks of microtransactions, which is absolutely crazy, I think it might have been even more than that, so it shows, so where's this money going to go, in my opinion, I think they'll go into funding DLCs, which I'll make money on obviously, and then make future content, personally, I think the model we saw in year 1 is the model we're going to have in Destiny 2, uh, I, obviously things could change in the development, you know, the same thing could happen that happened in year one, they realised they don't have enough of a team, but then again they've added High Moon Studios and Vicarious Visions to the development process, and I'll link the video I made on that 
in the description. I'll also link a few of the videos in the description that I think you should watch if you're new to the channel, including the channel trailer. And subscribe if you want some more. The content has slowed down, and I have to quickly give a channel update right at the end. I will make probably a bigger channel update video next week. But I'm thinking about Ghost Recon Wildlands and Fort Honor are two games that I am interested in, but I probably won't be making main content on. But I'm thinking the betas, I've applied for the closed betas, and if I get into them, I'm thinking maybe making one video, one or two videos on either of those games and see if you guys like it. Because at the end of the day, I'm, I am like a 99% Destiny channel, as I said, but that 1% of content, you know, I could fill it up with new releases and maybe a small review. But yeah. So thanks for watching the video guys, sorry it was a bit rambly, but give your thoughts on what you think DLC in Destiny 2 is going to look like. Personally I think it's going to follow a more formatted model and a more consistent model from all the jobs we've seen. Now I'll link the videos where I talk about the new positions at Bungie and things and what they're going to be performing and how I think it's going to create a more consistent content plan. But anyway, thanks for the support and watching the video, like and subscribe for more, I'll see you in the next one, bye bye. That was a bit too deep wasn't it, hold on. Ba ba, ah, oh, it's too high. Oh my god, this happens all the time. All right, I'll see you in the next one. <gasps> bye bye. Oh fuck. Just before we go, I'm gonna make a quick announcement. Uh, if you haven't followed my Twitter yet, it's actually catching up to my subscriber count, which I don't know how that's possible. But I've only just started really using Twitter properly for this channel, so I'll link that in the description and it's on screen now. Um, follow that, and I'll give you regular updates. Not just on when my videos are coming out, but what's going on in Destiny. I'll highlight the best things of the weekly update and give you a guide to the weekly reset because I don't feel they need a video every week because I think things like that are a bit cheap and I think top five reaction videos are a bit cheap as well. But anyway, I'm not dissing any YouTubers. But anyway, see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.